Hi there, it's Sissy from Absolute Potential Health and Performance here and um, this video is going to go into a myofascial stretch of the iliopsoas. So just to recap, um, the action of the iliopsoas, it does a couple of things. So if our feet are fixed on the ground or anchored onto the ground um, in standing, what it does is it flexes the trunk forward. If our arms are flexed, so if we were doing a hang for example, it um, flexes our hips up, so brings our legs up towards us. Its actions on the spine are to side bend to the same side and rotate to the opposite side and that's just because of where the fibre is attached to the front of um, the lumbar vertebrae and um, thoracic vertebrae. So the line of pull is more to rotate to the opposite side. Its effects on the pelvis and the hip but also to do a slight what's called an anterior tilt. Again you can imagine because those um, fibres are on the anterior part of your hip, they're going to slightly bring you into an anterior tilt. So remembering with a myofascial stretch, the way we do that is to go into the opposite of what the action does, uh, of, the, of what the muscle does, sorry, to get that stretch. And then we're going to tension the fascia and the muscles above and below that muscle to get that full whole body complete fascial stretch. So the very first position for the um, iliopsoas myofascial stretch is to come into what's called a serving knight position. So if you can imagine you're being knighted, um, you're kneeling on one side and the other leg straight out in front of you. Now some people have probably already done a similar stretch like this um, to stretch their hip flexors, but we're going to add some other bits and pieces which will take it to that next level. So it's really important in this position that you're as stable as you can be. So if you need to bring the leg out to the side to increase that base of support a little bit more, do that. It's really important you're nice and steady and not sort of wobbling around when we do this stretch because it's quite an intense one as well. The first portion, portion that we start off with is thinking about its effects on the lumbar spine. So remember we said that it bends to the same side and rotates to the opposite. To do the stretch, what we need to do is side bend away from the side that we're stretching and it's always a side that we are kneeling on that we're stretching. So we're, you're bending away from that side and then we're rotating towards that side to start to tension up that iliopsoas. From there, what we want to think about is we want to extend the lumbar spine because remembering what it does is it flexes the spine. So to do that stretch, we need to extend. So, so far we've got a side bend away, a rotation towards, and an extension of the spine, okay? So we're basically trying to think about um, standing up as straight as we can in that position. From there, what we want to do is an inflator of the ilia, which is basically a posterior tilt. So a really strong posterior tilt. If you think about your pelvis, you're rotating it backwards. Okay, so we've got side bend away, Rotation towards, extension of the spine, basically erecting your spine as high as possible, and then a really strong posterior tilt. Okay, and we're not talking about slouching forward, you're standing up nice and straight, and then just thinking about really rotating that pelvis back. And for a lot of people, this will already start to give a really good stretch in through the front of the hip. We're now going to add the components that make this a minor fascial stretch which are to tension the muscles and fascia above and below. So in terms of the upper limb, what we need to do from here is bring both limbs straight out in front of us. And we're going to go into a strong external rotation. And this position tensions the lat latissimus dorsi um, muscle and fibres. So those arms are going to be out into this position. And now in regards to the lower portion of your body, we're going to think about pressing the arch of our foot flat into the floor as much as possible and the kneeling knee is you're going to think about driving that down to the floor as much as you can so what you're thinking about is you're actually trying to open up into the front of the hip so it's what's called a decoctation of the hip okay so just to reiterate serving like position going to rotate away from the side you're bending so from the kneeling knee we're rotating towards the same side. We're standing up as straight as we can to get that extension in through the lumbar spine. And now we're gonna put on a strong posterior tilt. That's where we're already gonna to start to find we're feeling that stretching through the front. Bring both arms straight in front. 
and externally rotate. Push the arch of the stabilizing leg into the floor and then push the knee into the floor as far as we can. The foot of the kneeling leg is actually going into E version. So we're thinking about the toes pointing out to the side if we can. And then as with all myofascial fascia stretches, we're thinking about pushing away as much as possible, pushing the knee to the ground, pushing the stabilizing knee, uh, stabilizing arch into the floor as much as possible and the knee away from our body. So we're basically thinking about separating and lengthening away from the center of, of our body as much as possible. I can really feel that stretching through the front of my hip. You really want to think about, like I said, pushing away through here, driving down to the floor as much as possible, driving this knee as far as possible as we can. Now, we can actually um, change this stretch slightly to um, tension more of the posterior lateral or the anteromedial fibers. And to do that, so if we get back into position, let's start again. So it's good practice. Um, serving high position, we're stretching this side, the left side in my case. We're going to bend away, rotate towards, stand up nice and straight to get lumbar extension, and then a strong posterior tilt. We're then going to bring the arms out in front and into external rotation, just like that. Flatten the medial arch of the stabilizing leg. Toes of the kneeling leg are point, trying to point out towards the side. Good. And that nice little bit of a chin tuck so we get that erection in through the spine. Okay. Pushing away as much as we can from the center of our body, driving the knee to the floor, arch into the floor, arms away as much as you can. And then to tension or to bias towards the posterior lateral. Um, fibers, what we're going to do is we're going to side bend even more and rotate even more. And you should feel that, that tension or that stretch into the front changes slightly. To look at the anteromedial fibers a little bit more, we try and increase that extension in the lumbar spine a little bit more. So you're thinking about that posterior tilt and, straight, um, and straightening up as straight as you can to extend the spine as much as you can. So really think about tucking that bottom into um, down and in as much as we can. So I can feel that really um, quite tight in through the front of the hip as well as in through the back. You'll feel it as all with all these myofascial stretches generally through the whole part of your body. Um, with the first part, um, like I said, generally three reps we want to be thinking of. The first rep is just getting into that position. The second rep is trying to maintain that position. And then your third rep is where you put on that maximal stretch, aiming for a hold of 30 seconds. Um, a lot of people like this won't be able to do it. Just getting into that position and maintaining it will be enough of a stretch. But that final little bit of intensity where we're really thinking about pushing away, you know, we're pulling the fingers back as much as possible, remembering that fascia runs all the way to the right, our tip of our fingers, so we need to think about externally rotating, but also pulling the fingers back as much as possible to get that full um, contraction and um, tension in through the fibers above that muscle, and then really thinking about driving the foot down into the floor, the knee into the floor, and really, really we'll get that intense um, iliopsoas stretch in through the front of the hip. Um, as I said, do that three times um, by 30 seconds if you can build up to that. And you're going to find that that's going to give you a really, really good and effective full body stretch that's targeted specifically to the iliopsoas muscle.